Priyanka Nakpal over here and today we have special guest on our channel. He is YouTube inspiration guru, business coach, investor, one of the best authors in business category and he is one of the best speakers as well and he is none other than Ivan Carmichael. He also helped me out in finding one word for my channel which is happiness and you can see as a result I'm attracting all the good people in my life who are happy and with a positive vibe and uh, and this interview is all about his new book which is 10 rules of success i already did a review and i totally love the book so let's just go ahead and start so welcome ivan to our channel feel good within and good to see you again on our channel what's up feel good withiners it's evan carmichael i am an author i am a youtuber i've been on priyanka's channel a couple of times i think already and she had a few questions for me that I thought I would make some video responses for, hopefully bring some value to you guys. And let's get into it. So congrats, people are loving your book all over the world. How do you feel about it? So I launched my first book in 2016, Year One Word, my second book in 2017, Top 10 Rules of Success. Uh, it's awesome. I, I love it. I'm, I'm motivated by impact. I want the work that I do to matter. And so seeing the things that I'm working on make a difference to people makes me happy. Uh, from my YouTube channel, from the speaking I do, from the books, that's what really drives me to get up every day and do what I do. And so knowing that it's reaching people around the world is an amazing feeling. And uh, I don't always win. You know, a lot of the things I try don't work. Most of the things I try don't work. Uh, so it's great to see some that do work <laughs> and start having an impact. I love so many quotes from your book, especially this one, people with passion can change the world for the better and people who are crazy enough to think they can do it are actually the ones who do it. So uh, pretty sure that's a Steve Jobs quote. I'm a fan of Steve Jobs. Uh, I love it. I loved all the quotes in the book. I've learned from all of the quotes that have been put in the book. And the idea with this book, just to give some context, this one is the top 10 rules of success. It's a compilation of the most successful people in the world. Some of the people who've gone on and done the, the craziest, biggest, wildest things, the people who've shaped our world. And my intention with this book is I pulled together 10 rules from each of these people. And what I want people to do is read one page of the book a day. And on that one page will be two rules. And so you might read a book, uh, you might read a page about Steve Jobs, some of his quotes, you might read Priyanka Chopra, you might read the Dalai Lama, you might read Oprah Winfrey. Every day, what I want you to do is just read one page. And the goal here is that you're changing your mindset. The more you hang around successful people, the more you hang around people who are changing the way the world operates, the more that starts to seep into yourself, the more you gain boldness and confidence and excitement within yourself. Because if you don't have an environment around you that is pushing you to do amazing things, it's really hard to create it. And so that's my intention. I don't want you to read the book cover to cover. Don't read it in, in two days, which you can do and you'll get really excited and motivated, but then you'll fall back down. My intention is I want to shift how you think. I want you to believe in yourself more. I want you to play a bigger game. I want you to have confidence and boldness and courage in your ideas. And so that's the intention. So it's great that you know Priyanka loved this one quote and hopefully that makes you think. The goal is take two minutes, read one page and then take three minutes to just think about it and how you're gonna apply it to your life and your business. So every day you're spending five minutes you have five minutes. If you don't have five minutes in a day, then you know you don't deserve to go off and build something amazing. You can find five minutes a day and it starts to rewire your brain. Um, and so my intention is that every day you get hit with at least one message that makes you think on a bigger scale and with more courage. Last time you came, you said that you had some resistance uh, before writing this book. So how you overcome it? You know, in general, I'm not a big fan of writing. Uh, I'd much rather make a video. I'd much rather consume video. It's great that we're able to do this interview by video instead of me having to write out my answers. But for me, the ultimate goal is having an impact. And I felt in both of these cases, both books, that a book format was the best way to have that impact. So I make top 10 rules videos. I profile lots of famous people on my channel. Some of you may have seen some of my videos. What I felt like was I wanted something that you could pick up and one page a day in two minutes, get inspired. 
I think most people's morning routines suck. I think most people wake up like an accident. I think most people wake up and don't want to go off and do big, bold things. I don't, I don't wake up and I'm ready to go. I wake up and I'm tired and I have lines on my face and you know, I need something, I need the jolt. And so this is what I use. This is what I do every morning. I wake up and I read a page from the book and I like testing it on myself first. Everything that I do, the, the one word I use it, right? I'm about believe. And it had a huge impact on my business. So I wanted to share that. And so same thing with the second book, I was using it on a daily basis. I was getting value from it. And so because I got value from it, then I decided to turn it into something that my audience could uh, gain benefit from as well. And what is the reason for your crazy energy? I, last time you came, I totally loved your energy. So what's the reason behind it? Uh, that's a good question. What are the reasons for my crazy energy? I think one, I'm excited by the work that I do. I think if you put me in a situation where I'm not enjoying the people I'm with, the work I'm doing, if I don't find value or meaning in what I'm doing, I don't have crazy energy. Uh, I, you know, if I'm put in the class as an example, and I don't, I can't connect the mission. I can't connect why I'm learning this thing, or I'm frustrated with the pace of learning. I'm not a great student. I don't enjoy being in those situations. And so I think when you're doing something that you love, when you, when you, when you feel the meaning and purpose behind the work that you're doing, I think it's easier to get up and get energized and get excited. Uh, I think too, I'm just naturally an optimistic, positive person. I think if you are not, I think the way to get around that is to surround yourself with more optimism and positivity. I think just like reading this book, a page a day, you will automatically become bolder and more courageous, the more you surround yourself with positive and optimistic people, which is kind of a lot of the people in the book too, then that's what you become. You know, you are who you start to surround yourself with. You are a product of your environment. And so if you are negative and unhappy, chances are you have a pretty crappy environment. And so changing that, changing your habits from the physical environment, right? Like I walk in and I see these people, I watch the videos on my channel for myself. I read the book myself. These are all habits that set me up for having a great positive day every day. And, and lots of bad stuff happens. You know, today is an example. I had a hangouts with Stephen Kelly. He's the CEO of Sage, you know, 15,000 employee, multi-billion dollar company. And we got our time zones messed up. Uh, we have daylight savings here in Canada, but it's two weeks before daylight savings in the UK. And so he thought we were starting an hour later than we were actually starting. I've got a whole bunch of people sitting there on a chat waiting to join and nobody's showing up, right? Like the video is not going live. And we ended up launching half an hour late, right? He came on half an hour early for him. I came on half an hour late. We made the best of it. Uh, came out of that interview, went on another live hangout with somebody who uh, I promised to do some training for, and he messed up the timing. He told his audience that it was going to be at two o'clock and he told me one o'clock. And so the two of us were just sitting there by ourselves at one o'clock and then we decided to reschedule. And that happens. And you know what? Good news. Like now maybe it'll make this video. This video might have been delayed an extra week because my day was pretty packed today, but because that canceled, I now have a chance to do this. And I think that's part of entrepreneurship is the problems, the challenges, the frustrations, the entrepreneurs are the ones who see those problems and then find an opportunity because that didn't work out. That means I can do this. Anytime you see a problem, that means there's an opportunity for you to do something to fix it. And the entrepreneurs are the ones who fix it. And so the more you're surrounded by those people who see opportunities in the negative, then uh, that's what you start to adopt. Or if you're just around negative people all day long, then that's what you'll become too. So when you change your environment and you change your habits, you change your thinking, then you start changing your life. And why you should, uh, you know, ignore the little men? The little man, just for context, is the person who tells you all the things that you can't do, tells you all the reasons why you won't succeed. Often it's our friends, it's our family, it could be the people closest to us. Often it's ourselves. We tell ourselves that we can't do something, that we don't have the resources, that we're not good enough, that we don't have the education or the schooling or whatever reason you come up with that you can't do it. The little man forces you to play small. You never get to building anything amazing by listening to the little man or the haters in your life, right? And so again, the way through it, at least for me, it's easy to listen to the advice. Don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to the little man. It can be hard to execute. The environment again, changes that. So it's one of the most consistent rules that come up in the book, which is probably why Priyanka highlighted it. Uh, 
all of these people who've gone on and done amazing things. So we cover 40 of the world changing people. And one of the most consistent messages is don't listen to the little man. Don't listen to the haters. And for me, at least by reading the book, by watching the videos, the more I see them saying the same thing from different backgrounds, entrepreneurs, athletes, actresses, musicians, different backgrounds, all saying the same thing. It seeps in. It makes me realize that this is the game that I need to be playing. And so if you listen to the people who tell you you can't do things, and guess what? You're not going to do anything. Where if you listen to yourself and the boldness inside to say, I'm going to go off and create something amazing. If you actually believe in that, then guess what? You will actually go create something amazing. So that's why it's so important. You have to stand up to a little man. Oftentimes those are your friends. Oftentimes that's your mom. Oftentimes that's somebody in your family. And oftentimes that's yourself. And so learning to stand up and say, I'm going to be amazing today. I'm a genius. I'm going to make something awesome. I can do it. I believe. And what do you do for self-awareness? Uh, Self-awareness for me starts with your most important core value is finding your one word. It's the topic of my first book. I think most people don't know what they stand for. I think most people are living a life according to other people's expectations. I think you live in the life that your mom wants you to live or your dad or your friends, your society, your culture. Uh, you look up to somebody on Instagram and you want their life and you, you get pulled in different directions based off of what other people are saying and doing as opposed to really knowing yourself and saying, this is the path that I want to create. So as a result, most people walk around in the mud. Most people don't make massive progress. Most people are nowhere close to hitting their potential. They may not be at rock bottom, but they know that they've got more inside them. They know that they can do a lot more than what they're doing right now. Um, and so it starts to me, for me with self-awareness, your core value. Understand what your most important core value is. For me, it's believe. Then you can shape a life. And for those entrepreneurs, a business around it. Then you can start attracting people who believe in the same thing because people who have fundamentally different core values from you, you will never get along. If you are marrying somebody or if you are going into business with somebody as a partner who has all of the looks great on paper, has everything you want on paper, but you have different core values, you will never get along. And nobody really looks for that. It's so shocking. And so when you understand what your most important core value is and you put it out there and you start expressing it and you start creating around it, you're going to attract people who believe the same thing. And that allows you to go so much further, so much faster. And so uh, it's super important to figure that out, uh, what your most important core value is. And that's what I did for me. And everything I do is around believe. My content is around believe. This video is around believe. The books are right. It's trying to make people believe in themselves. And uh, it's just allowed me to go, go so, 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 so much faster. And what pattern did you notice in most successful people? Uh, a number of them. So, you know, at the beginning of this book, I talk about the 10 most common rules that come up over and over and over and over again. And it's worth going through. I'm not going to hit kind of all 10 right now, but not listening to the negativity, the little man doing the thing that you are passionate about. Super, super important. It's probably the most common rule that comes up over and over and over again. A lot of people jump into something because they just see an opportunity, but they don't love it. If you are doing work that you don't love, you will never win. You'll never win because the people who love doing that work will always win. They'll always beat you. And so better to find the thing that you love doing and apply it. And that's scary because you may not be very good at the thing that you love doing yet. There may be a lot of resistance. You may have to learn some new skills, but you will learn, you can learn any skill you need. You just have to get out and start doing it. And so uh, following your passion, I put as number one, not listening to the little man and believing in yourself. Another super, super important one, but there's 10 to go through in the book. Um, and they're messages that get repeated over and over and over and over again. You train yourself to write a book or you're a born writer? Uh, I'm not a born writer. I don't enjoy uh, most of the writing process. Um, I am a good writer and I enjoy parts of it. I just don't, I don't like sitting down for an entire day in writing. And so that's where you need to be able to hack your schedule. Um, if I had to write every single day of the week, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, I would go crazy. I'd much rather make videos and do other work. And so finding the windows in which you can win uh, understanding how to schedule around your habits, your lifestyle, your preferences becomes really important. Uh, I think I learned to write in English just because, you know, my parents believe in education and I became a good writer. Um, I think just being an entrepreneur and having to understand how to market and how to sell the language becomes a lot clearer. And then I think to being born in Canada and growing up, 
everybody's from a different country. You know, we're a nation of immigrants. My mother was born in Italy. Uh, growing up in Toronto is one of the most diverse cities in the world. Most of my friends growing up were not born in Canada. And so English is a second language for a huge chunk of people. And so my intention with the book, with both books, was to make it easy to read, to make it not have language that was super complicated. Even as I speak now, I try not to speak in using words that are impossible for people to understand. Uh, I also hate books where you have to go through pages and pages and pages. Like, where is this chapter going to end? I want it to be easy to pick up. You can read one page a day, one page at a time, and it still all makes sense. You know, my mother, when she came to Canada, she learned English by watching TV shows. And now it's awesome to hear how many people are learning English by reading my books and by watching my YouTube channel. It's a full circle moment for me that she learned that way. And now other people are learning from my content that way. And so I think with anything, it's just trained. I think you can learn any, anything really quickly if you wanted to, if you have the heart and desire to do it. I think you can amass skills uh, in a super short period of time that people who have decades of experience uh, still can't match just because you love it so much. And and think about your own background. Think about your education. Think about how much you remember from high school or university, how much facts and figures you were forced to memorize and how much of that stuck with you. Almost nothing because you didn't care about that. You were just trying to memorize to get a test and to get a score. And once you achieved your result, you forgot about it. But the things that you actually cared about, the things that you loved, the things that you genuinely found intriguing, you still remember those things. And years later, you'll still remember it. And so it just shows the power that spending years learning something doesn't mean you're going to be very good at it if you don't actually have the love, where if, when you do have the passion for it, you can pick up something really, really, really quickly. And so I would encourage people who are watching this, if you want to learn something, just go out and start doing it. You can get really good really fast um, if you have that deep passion to learn. Your favorite YouTuber? My favorite YouTuber is myself. Uh, I, I think, I think you need to like your own stuff. I think I make my, my videos for me selfishly, and then I share it with the world. I think I have a lot to do to get better. I need to learn a lot more. Uh, I think that I suck and I think I'm awesome and I have the best YouTube channel on the planet and I should get a Nobel prize. Uh, it's, it's that, it's that it's both. It's the I'm not good in the F yet. I need to keep getting better. That pushes me to keep driving forward. And I'm awesome. And I'm creating amazing value for so many people. I think people need to like their own stuff a little bit more. Your favorite singer? I don't know that I have a favorite singer. I have Kanye West up on my wall, but I don't really know that I like his songs. I just like, uh, I like how he forces people to think bigger. So maybe I'll go Kanye West. Your favorite sport? My favorite sport is baseball. I like the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, I sometimes have a hat. I don't see it around here anywhere, but um, Toronto Blue Jays are my team. What do you do for your fitness? You do meditation, yoga, or you go to gym? I've tried meditation many times, many, many, many times. Lots of different techniques, different formulas. I haven't found it at works. Um, I haven't found the right technique or the right teacher that um, that has had an impact on me. I believe that it works. I've seen it work in other people. I've tried the same method and technique. It just hasn't clicked with me yet. Um, I can sit there and, and visualize and, and say a mantra or uh, do a guided meditation. I can, I can sit there and not get antsy, but I don't wake up from it and open my eyes and feel any different than when I started it. So um, it's something that I would like to one day figure out and i'm still looking at it regularly i believe that it works i believe in the science um i just haven't figured out how to make it work for me yet yoga i don't do um never got into it i've had a couple classes and i think it's i think it's a great form of exercise i prefer to do salsa dancing um i think what's missing maybe in, in canada is the yoga with the spiritual side i think there's been a heavy focus on just the, the exercise and the technique and the moves, but it's lacking the spiritual side and the guidance there, which I would, I would like to be in a class that incorporates both of those. That could be cool. Uh, just hasn't been a massive priority though, for me to take yoga class. We've had yoga class. I have a dance studio as one of my businesses. We've taught yoga there. I've taken a few classes. 
just hasn't been the thing that stuck for me. And do I go to the gym? I usually go to the gym twice a week with a personal trainer and then another one to two times a week on my own or with my wife doing cardio or some extra exercises. So how your environment make a lot of difference? So your environment sets the tone for your day. Your environment uh, allows you to go. What I love about the environment is you don't have to think about it. It can be a lot of work every morning to wake up and think about being bold or being a success or doing something big. Uh, some days you can do it and some days you'll forget or it'll, it'll feel like too much work and you won't want, to, won't want to do it. But your environment sets up automatic triggers. So for me, I walk into this environment, like look at these people on the wall. You know, you know, some of them, uh, some of them you don't know. A lot of them are probably meaningless to you. But to me, it means something to me walking in here immediately triggers something in me to want to do something a little more bold, a little more powerful. And so I set it up once. And then I get that little hit every single day. I get that burst. And so I think it's super important, especially for entrepreneurs where we don't have a boss. We don't have somebody telling us to be here on a certain time. We don't have somebody pushing us to go harder that you set up an environment that allows you to be your best. And so whatever that thing looks like for you, I think it starts again with figuring out your one word for me. It's believe this is believe. This is a believe environment for me. When you figure out your one word, what is that? manifestation look like in a physical environment super important and what's missing in your life i'm the kind of person that if i feel something's missing i go at and attack it aggressively i don't have a five-year goal you know as soon as i come up with something it'd be cool if i could do this one day then i find a way to start doing it immediately and so there's nothing that's really missing from my life i would just say I want to have a bigger impact. It's like, it's a constant, never ending driving mission. I want to, I want to touch as many people as humanly possible. I want to solve the world's biggest problem, which will never be solved Untapped human potential. You know, it's, it's beyond my lifetime, but I'm waking up every day trying to tackle this problem. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't say anything is really missing. And as soon as I notice, and it's not that I'm perfect or amazing or anything, I think it's more that as soon as I figure out something is missing, I go out and solve it. And I'll have lots of these little micro moments. So I don't have this macro collapse where I hate my life and everything's falling apart because I wasn't paying attention to all the little micro moments. As soon as I feel a little micro moment, as soon as I feel a change in direction or like, hmm, I feel like this is missing, then I just start doing it and I solve that problem. So as soon as there's a little bit of a hole, I fix it. One thing you're most grateful for? I think I'm most grateful for just being able to live this life. I think it's great. I, I most days love my life. You know, I wake up, get to do amazing things with amazing people, have to have an amazing impact. And I, I get to choose it. And compared to what most people are doing or how most people are living, I wouldn't trade my life for anybody else in the world. And I think that's a huge gift and a huge blessing. And knowing that I get to, uh, I get to decide, I get to determine for the most part. Like I, I think everything is my fault. I think Whatever happens around me is my fault. Even if it's somebody else's fault, it's still my fault. And then with that mindset, it allows you to then, if you take responsibility, then you can change it. You can dictate a better future for yourself. And so I, I really love that. I'm grateful for that and uh, think about it every day. Who is your mentor? My biggest mentor, my parents are behind me on my wall. They taught me believe. They taught me how to be a good human being. They taught me how to, how to treat people well. Uh, basically how to act, not a lot about entrepreneurship. That wasn't really their skill set, but, but values and belief systems. And then from there, everybody who I featured on my channel, hundreds of people, thousands of people, I guess by now, um, are all my mentors. If I haven't learned something from a video, I don't post it. I've learned something from every video that I've put up and I've put up thousands of videos. And so I think you can learn from everybody. I think people have a hard time doing that. I think people only want to learn from people who look like them or have the exact same values as them. I try to learn from everybody. So, you know, you look at Steve Jobs, maybe I don't want to learn how to be a parent like Steve Jobs. Maybe, maybe I don't want to learn how to, you know, be an HR manager like Steve Jobs, right? How he treated some of his people. There's a lot that I wouldn't want to take from Steve Jobs. That's okay. I don't want to be Steve Jobs. I want to be the best Evan Carmichael. And I can learn something from Steve Jobs about how to have a vision that I can apply to make me a better Evan Carmichael. Same thing with Kanye West on the back there. There's a lot of stuff that Kanye has done that I would never do, that I don't agree with. He puts his foot in his mouth a lot. 
and uh, just stuff that I don't want to emulate. But that doesn't mean there are other things that I can't learn from him. And so I think you can learn from everybody. I think having that mindset um, can really help you learn faster, especially, you know, if you can only learn from the people who look like you, who have the exact same belief system as you, then you've really put yourself in a box. I will only learn from people who look like this. Then you're living in yourself. And I think that's not a smart strategy. I think if you can open it up to say, I'm going to learn, if you could teach me something, you could be the worst human being in the world. But if you can, if I can learn one thing from you, I'm happy to learn it. Not being so attached to the messenger, uh, but paying attention to the message. So my biggest mentor, my parents, and then, and then everybody else, humanity, the world. And what is your biggest fear? My biggest fear is regret. My biggest fear is not doing what I'm capable of doing. Uh, looking back and say, I should have done more. I could have been better. I could have given more. Uh, I live my life through fear of regret. Whenever I'm afraid to do something in the short term, like if I'm afraid to make this video, I'm afraid to do a talk, or I'm afraid to call on that customer, uh, I imagine 50 years of my life regretting not having made that decision. I just make the future fear of regret so big that it forces me to take some kind of action immediately. Um, and so my biggest fear is having regrets at the end of my life. And I try to avoid that as much as possible. And what is the biggest secret which no one knows about yet? I don't know. I'm a pretty open book. Uh, biggest secret that nobody knows about me. How about I crack my neck a lot. I'm trying to do it right now. I can't get it. I, I stand on a uh, trampoline. So I'm on a trampoline all day long which compresses my neck and compresses my lower back. And so at the end of the day, usually I have to crack my back and crack my neck, but I'll get 20 to 30,000 jumps a day in on my rebounder. And what made you write this book? Again, I just wanted a way to have people have a daily resource to be motivated, to be inspired, to get hit with excitement, to change people's habits, to on a, on a regular basis, have a little bit of greatness seep into you and that little two minute hit of greatness every day. If you do it, I've seen the results myself for myself and for other people. If you inject two minutes of greatness, boldness, courageousness every day into your life, your life will start to change. And so it's having a huge impact and it had a big impact on me. And so that's why I wanted to write the book. And writing a book is easy or the hardest for you? Uh, you know, for questions like this, I think everything good comes with difficulty. So for me to make a great video is going to, is going to be difficult. Even, even though I've done thousands of videos for it to me to grow and make a better video, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. I was filming earlier this week and I really put a lot of pressure on myself that this has to be my best video production day ever. I need to really hone in on my message. I need to really bring fire and energy and passion and really believe in the content that's coming out. I need to really make it more important. And so I think the minute something gets really easy to do, that's when you start to lose. Uh, start to lose, maybe not in the market because I could stay at this level and you know people will still enjoy it. Maybe at some point somebody passes me, but I think you start to lose with yourself. I think you should start to lose at life. The day that you start, you stop doing hard things and you only do easy things. I look at musicians, for example, uh, who might be in their fifties or sixties, and they may have had lots of early hits, great music, and whether well, they were twenty or thirty. And then now 30 years later, they're still just playing the same songs that they wrote 30 years prior. And they might have sold out shows and concerts, but they're just singing the same songs that they were singing 30 years ago. They haven't come up with anything new. They haven't done the difficult work. They haven't pushed themselves more. I don't want to be that person. I want to be 70 years old, still making my, my best stuff. I think my best stuff is still ahead, always. And so if something just becomes easy for me, I don't want to do it for too long. I don't want to run a race against three-year-olds. I want more difficulty. I, I want to do things that are harder. I want things to push me to grow so I can improve as a human being, just for my own satisfaction. 
uh, it's great that I get to bring people along the journey with me. And as I grow and learn and get better, I'm able to provide more value for people who are in my audience and my customers and my fan base and all that stuff. But just for my own satisfaction and happiness, if I'm not pushing and growing and progressing and learning, um, then I'm not happy. So I want everything that I do to be hard, but for the right reasons, right? Like I want, I want to make this, I want this video to be hard. I want my next video to be hard. Uh, it means that I'm learning. And as soon as something becomes too easy, then I want to find a way to make it hard again. So that's the end of the questions. Lots of them. Thank you for the love, Priyanka. I hope that helped. Uh, thank you for exposing my thoughts and my book and my concepts to your audience. Uh, hopefully you guys got some value from that q and A. I I would love to hear your thoughts. If you want to leave it in the comments below, subscribe to uh, Feel Good Within if you want to feel more good within. I appreciate the time today. I believe in you guys. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. And thank you so much, Ivan, for answering all the questions. It was truly an honor to have you on our channel. Hope we'll meet one day. <laughs> Rest, guys. Thank you so much for watching this interview. I hope you totally enjoyed watching this interview. And if you guys enjoyed watching and if you guys want to buy the book 10 Rules of Success or your one word link is mentioned in the description below. You guys can go ahead and buy it. Also, you guys can go ahead and subscribe to Ivan's channel. And have a wonderful and a blessed day. Hey everyone, love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.